Hello everyone, welcome back to the Great Edge Workshop. Uh, I have an electrical video for you tonight, uh, so if you're here for the sharpening content, which I imagine uh, nearly all of you, if, if you're a subscriber, uh, this, this may be one that you skip and, and rejoin on, on the next video. I've got one coming up very soon on, uh, on, on pricing for, for knife sharpening jobs. Uh, but tonight I want to put my other hat on, which is the, the electrical work that I do with Great Edge, uh, to talk a little bit about pat testing. Uh, and a mini review of this uh, C-Word Prime Test 250 Plus uh, that, that I've acquired. So uh, when people are demonstrating pat testing devices, pretty much always get end up testing um, to toasters or, or kettles. I thought I'd try something a little bit different here. I'm gonna run through some features of the, the, the Prime Test 250 Plus with my Tormek T8. Um, Tormek is a class one appliance, meaning that it has exposed metalwork that is linked uh, to, the, to the circuit protective conductor of the, of the, um, of, of the, the, the plug and, and, and cable. Uh, so all things going well, should have a very low uh, resistance between that exposed metalwork and the earth pin of, of the plug. So uh, I've got the, 250 plus uh, setup now, just a matter of uh, switch, switching it on. So there's nine buttons on the front of the uh, 250 plus, some related to uh, saving and recalling your results. There's also a direct print, which I'm, I'm not interested, <laughs> speaking frankly, not interested in, in using the printer feature. So I haven't bought that uh, and, and it's not set up. Then the six test related buttons here. Uh, so we've got class one appliance, class two appliance, a leakage test set up so you can get into menu and change some of the, the parameters related. Um, there's an RCD function and we're going to come back to that later in this video uh, and some three phase testing which not applicable for, for my purposes for now. Um, but uh, to get us going press the class one and class two buttons uh, simultaneously to get the device switched on and then with your crocodile clip properly in place on the earth metalwork that you're that you're planning to test uh, and the device plugged in, it's simply a matter of pressing the, the correct test button. So I'm gonna press the class one test, fire away. And what we're looking for is a nice, the, the, get uh, three three numbers here, the earth bond result, the uh, insulation resistance test, and then the, the uh, leakage test, uh, looking for nice low numbers for the earth bond test. That means there's good continuity between the, the, the metal work that I happen to be testing and the earth pin of the plug. Uh, insulation resistance, we want to be high. The C word prime, prime test 250 records up to uh, well, greater than 19.99 mega ohms is off scale high. And that's uh, likely what we've got here. Um, oh, sorry. I'm gonna rerun this. It's while it was running through the sequence of tests, I should have been actually trying to power up the the, the Tormac. So uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go again, uh, and I'm just gonna hold down the the the, the, the run button here. Um, so not point zero seven. Looking for something below not point one uh, as as pass greater than nineteen point nine nine. So again, insulation is great, uh, and the earth leakage. So overall, a pass. Um, very straightforward, and these handheld battery powered uh, pat testing devices are designed to be as, as simple as that. So there's a, normally a, with um, Q-Tech, C-Word, so, you know, the old main brands, there's normally a class one button, a class two button, uh, something for testing leads, uh, which on the C-Word is the, is the class one button again, and it will automatically detect if you're testing a lead uh, and, and away you go from there. So. That's a class one. That's the, the class one test sequence with the Prime Test 250. Now I'm going to uh, pause the camera and move us around to uh, sh show you some features related to RCD testing. Okay, stand by. All right, so here we are set up in front of a test rig. So this is a consumer unit, but uh, wired up off of off a plug supply. Uh, so entirely for testing experiments, electrical work uh, that I'm doing, etc. So uh, here I've got a du dual configuration. I've got uh, sockets and lights that are run off RCBOs and then sockets and lights that are run off an RCD. Uh, and so what I thought I would do is show you the RCD testing function of the C-Word Prime Test 250 because uh, it tends to be overlooked in videos that I've seen for functionality of, of this device. So uh, with the supplied IEC, 
lead that's going to plug into the port at the at the top of the machine and then normally you'd use this for testing ex extension leads etc but it's also used for your um for, for the rcd test so uh, if you're doing installation rcds rather than an rcd on the end of an extension lead uh, you plug that into the end of um uh, uh plug that into a socket that you're that you're planning to test turn the device on now one of the things uh that's noteworthy here is that for an rcd test it's going to go through the 1x tests meaning uh for a 30 amp rc uh, 30 milliamp rcd it's going to test them at zero degrees and 180 degrees at 30 milliamp fault current and then it's going to do your 5x tests as well uh, which is 150 milliamps at zero degrees and 180 degrees and it's going to go through all four of those in sequence uh, without stopping so you'll just see the numbers pop up here uh, one, at, one at a time hopefully i can position this in a way that the numbers are legible for you now uh, a, a couple of things that are noteworthy about that the the 5x test isn't strictly required anymore by bs 7671 i realize uh, there's sets of regulations that apply to pat testing and then a separate set of regulations that apply to uh, fixed wiring testing but so for a fixed installation rcd if you were testing that uh, the 5x test is no longer required it is still good practice uh, and you know if you were if you were testing an rcd for a customer uh, that passed the 1x test but failed the 5x you probably want to have a take a take a close look at that rcd and maybe recommend a replacement to the customer but strictly speaking this is running tests that you uh, that, that you don't need to do for fixed fixed wiring tests um it's it's uh the, the other thing to note uh it's, i see it's it's powered down but i'll get it switched on in a moment before we start um your specifications you're not going to be able to read that on camera but they print them on the back which is which is handy and one of the things that i noticed is that the the, the limit for a, a pass for an rcd uh 1x test is 200 milliseconds now again there's a divergence from what bs 7671 the the fixed wiring regulations state um for 1x test an rcd is meant to trip within 300 milliseconds so you do have the possibility that this device uh is going to show you a failed rcd uh, on on the screen uh which actually passes in relative to the to the wiring regulation so slightly embarrassing uh, if customer standing next to you and and they happen to notice over your shoulder that your device says the rcd failed and you know that it, that it's a pass and you've got some explaining to do so a little bit of a deficiency there uh in in terms of the setup but um anyways let's uh let's move on and see how the testing goes so same same thing uh, pressing the class one and class two buttons to power it up uh i'm i'm plugged in circuits switched on and because it's an rcd we've got lights and sockets together so you'll hear the click see the breaker go down but also as another visual clue i've got the light on and you'll see when the rcd trips the light goes off so away we go and again it's doing the th four test in sequence so 1x at zero degrees that's 26 milliseconds it's telling me to reset the rcd now it's doing the same test at 180 degrees 16 milliseconds reset I was doing 5x test at zero, six milliseconds. Hopefully that's legible. <clears throat> and then 5x at 180 degrees, nine milliseconds. And because all four of those results are within the, the, the specified time, it's saying this RCD is a pass. Now, what I thought would be interesting uh, is for a comparison to run through the same set of tests with uh, my Mega 1741 multifunction tester. I think the screen is, is visible there. Uh, so switch the RCD back on and we're gonna go through a ramp test. Now this one's gonna have two additional tests. It's gonna test the RCD uh, at half current, uh, meaning 15 milliamps, and that should not trip. So you'll see some no trip results here uh, at, at the start. There's our first one, 26.3 milliseconds. So the the C word reported 26. So we're we're in, in pretty good alignment there. Uh 16.8, I think the C word reported similar. I think there were nine or so. Uh six. I'll have to go back and and, and check the results. But anyways, pass there and, and pass here, and then one final test. Resetting. Uh, and 
11. So the C word and the uh, and the maker agree that this RCD uh, is is a pass at both 1x and 5x currents. All right, so that's that's a, a quick summary of the test test functions and capabilities of the C word prime test 250. Uh, a lot of these handheld devices from C word and other manufacturers are set up in a very similar way that there's a class one button, class two button, etc. As I said, uh, this one's perfectly competent and, and easy to use in, in that regard. The buttons are clearly clearly laid out, etc. Um, but then with the RCD function, you have some extra extra capabilities here. Now, with pat testing, RCD test testing of RCDs uh, from the fixed installation are outside the scope normally of, of portable appliance testing. Uh, so it's a feature that I can't see that every pat tester is going to be needing, or maybe not very many pat testers are going to be needing, uh, because my work crosses over between testing of, of portable appliances and also fixed fixed installations by EICRs, etc. RCD testing is relevant uh, for me, and it, it's nice to see that this device lines up with my multifunction tester, although i got to be honest, if I am ever testing a, a, an RCD uh, from, a, from the fixed installation, I'm going to be reaching for an MFT rather than this one. So I can't think of too many times uh, where I would be using this to test RCDs, but it's nice to see again that it's that it's perfectly, uh, perfectly capable and, and competent at doing so and gives uh, comparable results. My only uh, bugbear with this one uh, is that with the the, the the um, earth bond lead is unable to be nulled. So this one, uh, if I am just measuring it looped around on itself, I'm still getting a resistance of point, uh, not 0.05, not 0.06 ohms, uh, even when that, that's just the resistance of the, of the device itself and the lead that it's, that it's supplied with. So um, I'll have to factor that in with any sort of test result that if I'm getting up to a borderline pass or maybe a bo borderline fail, something that's just crept over the, the acceptable limit, I've got to remember, okay, there's an amount that I can subtract from that result all the time. And it's just, it would be a lot simpler to be able to null that back to zero. Uh, and s similar to the example I mentioned with the RCD test, where because the limits on this are set below what the actual limit the requirements are for fixed installation RCDs. You could have a situation where you've got a customer standing next to you and the C word is saying fail and you've got to convince them that no, no, actually it's a pass. It's just my device is, is saying wrongly that it's a fail. Uh, and there's two circumstances where that could happen on the uh, RCD trip time and then also on the earth bond if you've got a result that's slightly too high but because you can't this device doesn't automatically remove the the resistance of the earth lead uh, you can end up with it saying fail across here and you've got to tell the customer no no it's a pass you know don't trust this device that i'm using uh to test all of your equipment so um that's that's a bit of a miss i think but otherwise a, a very handy device. Uh, I quite like it. You know, this is, this is mine. I've, I've paid for it. I've paid my own money, uh, for it. So I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to use it and give it a, give it a hard workout. But, uh, yeah, just, just a couple of details that I think for the, the price and for the quality level of, you know, where SeaWord pitches this device, I think a couple of things could have been made a little bit better, but anyways, um, hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed, uh, and thank you for tuning in. If you've made it this far, uh, if you uh, haven't already, uh, please do hit the thumbs up if, if you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in, in more of this, this, this content. Those of you that have made it this far and usually follow for knife sharpening content, there's more of that coming, I promise. Uh, but if you enjoy this sort of electrical comment, uh, uh, content, there's more of this uh, coming as well. So anyhow, uh, thanks very much and bye for now.